Greetings and welcome to Theology Geek Fitness. I'm Jonathan Pritchett. In this video, I'm going to talk about my experience over the last two years having worked out at home or in my office or wherever I feel like it. So I started my latest uh, fitness saga. I guess it was in April of 2019, and I, I've chronicled uh, this in previous videos, but in April of 2019, I was about 220 pounds, needed to lose a lot of weight and get healthy because I was having a lot of issues uh, with my health. And so I did, and I joined a gym around June uh, of uh, 2019. So I, I started exercising uh, just by walking and doing some light dumbbell exercises to try to get myself uh, into some good habits. And then I joined the gym in June of 2019. And by uh, October, I had lost 75 pounds and got down to 145 pounds by uh, October, sticking to a, a strict caloric deficit of uh, 1,500 calories a day, five days a week, and around 2,000 or so, uh, two days a week. And then when I got all that weight off, I maintained that all the way through March of 2020, which uh, on my birthday, which was uh, the 14th, was the last day I ever uh, went to the gym. Uh, I've been a couple times to various hotel gyms or whatever uh, in the past two years while traveling, but I I've never gone back to like a gym. I canceled my gym membership uh, in May of 2020. Of course, the gyms had closed down uh, that weekend. That was the last weekend anyone could go to the gym. And so at that point, I started scrambling for options uh, just to get by until the gyms reopened. And I had gone through various types of equipment, whatever I could get my hands on since uh, a lot of things were sold out at the time. So uh, I found little things that I could work with. And I ended up sticking with the 41-inch loop resistance bands. And once I scored a full set of those, it was off to the races. And I like to use other types of things. But over the last two years... Uh, so how has working out at home gone for me? Well, I went from 220 to 145, and then I maintained that for about six months. And then over the past two years, I, uh, as of today, uh, recording this video, I'm at the 160, it was like 160.8 on the scale this morning. So, um, and that's what it's been for the past week or so. Uh, so overall, 15 pounds I've added and I would have to say that most of that is uh, muscle. Now, it's, of course, at that time of year where uh, I don't mind actually uh, trying to have a couple of extra pounds. So my body fat percentage is probably higher than it was uh, by a couple of points uh, when I was at my uh, smallest at 145. But um, And I also plan on doing a little mini cut just to firm back up and I'll probably lose a little bit of hopefully not much but maybe a little bit of uh, of these muscle gains but 15 pounds in two years that's what seven and a half pounds a year all told while staying really lean um, certainly 15 percent body fat or, or less so I'm happy with that uh, seven and a half pounds of mostly muscle is fine with me I'm again I'm 45 years old uh, so I don't know how much I could reasonably expect, but um, if I was 25, probably be more. Uh, but I've only been working out for two years, got most of my newbie gain, so it's, you know, uh, centimeter by centimeter from here on out anyway. But I've never, you know, even when I was in shape in my uh, late teens, early 20s, and then for a time in my late 20s and early 30s, I've never really gained a whole lot of mass. I mean, like with a good solid pump, my biceps are 14 and a half inches. You know, I'm not, not like super swole, but the, you know, whatever. Um, still look good. Uh, so uh, at least for a man my age and considering where I came from. So I'm actually really happy with the, with the progress that I've made, uh, over the past couple years. It seems very realistic, especially for my age. I'm not taking any supplements other than protein powder. I don't even use creatine. Uh, I may look into that. I don't know if it'll do anything for me at this point. Who, who knows? Uh, people say it's good for your heart too. So I, I don't know. I'll look into whatever. I'm always willing to try stuff. But uh, as far as um, my diet and my exercise uh, routines and, and workout programs, 
this is probably the most consistent I've ever been in my entire life uh, as far as maintaining uh, steady gains, staying lean, eating a proper diet, and working out consistently. So uh, gyms work great. I, I, I have evidence that it worked for me as far as getting the weight off and, and stuff, but I never, uh, never really knew anything beyond the gym until I had to learn from uh, trial and error when the gyms closed down on me. So I've discovered that I actually enjoy doing all of the things that I'm doing now a whole lot more than I do going to the gym. And I have enjoyed using the types of equipment I have where I mostly just stuck with uh, free weights and machines at the gym and then tried a few other little things that they had there. Um, with the slam ball and kettlebell and a suspension trainer and uh, approximate a lot of the, those types of exercises I was doing with the resistance bands. And then of course I have a slam ball, I have suspension trainers and all that. And I've gotten more into body weight and calisthenics anyway. So um, I've really loved it and I don't really miss, I mean, if I wanted to realistically, I, uh, uh, this is not to like boast on myself or whatever, but I mean, I could reasonably afford a set, you know, like a bar, uh, and weight plate set, you know, a 300 pound pack that's, you know, like 245s, 235s, 225s, 210s, and 25s, and it comes with a bar. You can get that for like 400 bucks, and I could afford a bench, and I could afford that, uh, 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 uh a rack or something, or, you know, at least a small one if I wanted to spend that kind of money all at once. Um, I could afford that if I saved my pennies or if I financed it. Uh, I have zero interest in doing that. I never wanted to use expensive stuff. Now, uh, if you add up all the things that I've collected over the past two years, I definitely have uh, at least uh, that, um, that kind of money invested in, you know, um, I think I'm, you know, you could safely say over a thousand dollars. Um, so, but not a whole lot more than that, actually, to be honest. Um, but you know, if, if you start adding up different things and I've gotten a lot of stuff secondhand and used, so, but I probably have spent over the last, I've probably spent about $500 a year easy on, on this kind of stuff. Um, now I did, I have bought and sold stuff as I've tried it. So a lot of that is the same money over and over again. So I have something I lose. And I've also bought stuff for other people uh, just to try to give them something to, to use. Uh, but still, uh, I, I haven't spent a, a massive amount of money. Uh, and I like having all of the things that I have more than I would just using uh, free weights. Uh, at the house. So I don't miss all that. I don't think I'm missing anything in terms of making progress, like making gains or whatever. Uh, when you think about my age, my genetics, all of that, I'm, I'm getting pretty close to what I could do regardless of what kind of equipment I use. Uh, I am still getting stronger though. And I always like to check that. Like if I'm at Dick Sporting Goods or Walmart or something, I'll grab a free weight and, oh, I can uh, curl 45 pound dumbbells. That's pretty cool. I mean, not like I can do like that for uh, ever, but I mean, I can curl 45 pound dumbbells for a set of 10 and like, wow, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. There's a little bit of momentum cheating at the end of that set, but you know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow, I, that's impressive. I was curling 25 pound dumbbells two years ago. So whatever. Um, I'm fine with that kind of, uh, progress, uh, get on the chest press machine at a hotel gym, see what I'm doing there. You know, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, I, I don't think I've lost anything. I've certainly made, uh, physique gains, you know, muscle gains and stuff. So I, I'm really happy with, with where I'm at. Uh, I'm really happy using the gear that I use. I, I just enjoy it. One of the things that is cool about a gym is they have all these different machines and they have the free weights and all that. You can bounce around and if you want to play with a suspension trainer or whatever you can, you know, they have lots of toys. And so I kind of like the fact that I can go grab a sandbag or I can grab a suspension trainer or a resistance band or my weight vest. I can use my parallettes. I can use my uh, dip bars. I can use pull-up bars. Uh, I have uh, a $15 battle rope from Five Below. I think they still have those, actually. I have my Inertia Wave 
that you've seen me use. I have my hydro balls. I have all this stuff that I can play with, and I, and I have my plyo box. You know, I've got some balance of my Terra glider, Terra glide thing. Um, you know, I've got plenty of stuff to use, and I enjoy using everything that I use. Uh, I haven't seen anything come to market that I don't have that I actually want. I, I do want a second sandbag that's heavier than the 50 pound sandbag that I reviewed in my previous video. But uh, I, I still have no interest in buying uh, dumbbells or kettlebells or a bench or a bar or a rack or anything like that. Um, that's what I used uh, sporadically as I would join a gym for a few months and quit over the years or whatever. That's what I've always known. So part of this, just branching out into all this other types of equipment that I review here on the channel that you see me use, probably is just all new to me. It's not new, new, but it's new to me. And so I like checking that kind of stuff out. Uh, I, you know, in addition to being a theology geek, I'm a I'm a workout gadget geek, I guess. I mean, you know, I liked using suspension trainers, but I never got the premium TRX. You know, I, I had a knockoff one that I found for five dollars. Right. And then I decided to buy another one that I found for like thirteen dollars. That was a rip off of the pocket monkey. And then I have that fifteen dollar gravity trainer thing that I picked up at Walmart. And I swear by that thing. I did a whole video on that and some stretch bands. And that's. Uh, plenty to get going, um, you know, uh, and then I got the, um, T2 ISO trainer, uh, some friends of mine in a, in a fitness group were, were talking this thing up and I checked it out cause I like suspension training and you can see my review of that. Love it. So I, I love trying out all these different things and seeing what I can do without ever having to buy another bar or, or using free weights or machines or whatever. But I'd say overall, my experience has been great. Uh, it's, I never worked out with anyone at the gym. I couldn't get anyone to go with me anyway. And then when you're at the gym, nobody ever talks to each other because they all have their earbuds in. So uh, that was never a factor. Um, but I've been able to stay more consistent than I've ever stayed working away from uh, uh, the gym and just being able to do it whenever I want to, either at the office or at home or on my lunch break or whenever two years straight of never missing a workout uh is pretty impressive for myself you know for given my history with this so all told i'm happy is it for everyone probably not but it it's for most people i did a video comparing commercial gyms to home gyms and given the amount of uh, dropping out that people do from commercial gyms i'd say that your best shot uh, especially if you're out of shape and you're not very consistent or whatever, your best shot is actually getting some of the types of equipment that I use, um, find something that you like and do it at home. Uh, your best shot for being consistent and having success because most people fail, most diets fail, most workout program routines fail. And most of it, most all of it is due to a lack of consistency. But uh, I found that when you get consistent, you do it, uh, whenever you can fit it into your life while making a commitment to do it, you get into a ha habit so much easier because you're not like trying to get out of your way to go to the gym, right? It's not, it's not adding anything because you can do home workouts while you watch whatever you watch on television already. You're not adding to your day. Or if you do it during your lunch break, you're already, you know, you probably don't need to eat out on your lunch break at work. If you're sitting in an office or whatever, or even if you work at a fast food joint, you don't need to eat where you work at. You can pack a lunch and then you can get a quick workout if you have 30 minutes or an hour. Uh, see, it, it adds so much less to your uh, schedule while adding something new that's beneficial to your life. So I think that working out with this type of equipment can get you just as good of results as a gym, if not better, because it's easier for most people to be consistent if you, uh, if you uh, commit to it. So those are my thoughts for uh, two years. I consider my two years of being away from the gym uh, a marvelous success. Uh, I would hope that other people would uh, find the same thing. You know, I hope other people find success. Uh, some people find success in the gym, uh, and that's great. Whatever you can do to find success, I like. I said, I'm not, I'm not messianic about this. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to be uh, claiming that my way is better. It's better for me, but I, I am claiming that my way is 
statistically better for most people, given the statistics on how many people fail uh, with their gym memberships and with their diets, that chances are, you, I, I will say that you're more likely to succeed trying it this way than you are joining a gym. But uh, that's, uh, you never know. Uh, I'd like to see uh, how that works. But given the fact that all of this uh, equipment is so popular um, nowadays uh, that I think people are starting to find whatever they're using Peloton or, or whatever people are finding at home experience. Uh, they're able to do better than they would be at a commercial gym. And the good news is you don't need it. And if you find something that you like, it doesn't cost a whole lot of money to get into it. Even if you wanted to get dumbbells on a bench or a, uh, a rack or whatever if you're consistent for the rest of your life it pays for itself so um i'm not saying my way is the the best way or the only way but i think my way is a very very good way and i think it's good for most people especially people who who know they need to get into shape uh and aren't just fitness junkies but that you need to become one this is the easiest in you'll ever find because it doesn't add a whole lot uh, of complications to your schedule while you can work it into your schedule and it doesn't add anything to your life but benefits. So there you go. Uh, those are my thoughts. And if you like the video, click the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And uh, leave a comment for the algorithm. Um, leave a comment uh, about anything. Anything you'd like to see me talk about or cover on the channel. And uh, if you want to support what we're doing financially, you can at uh, patreon.com slash Theology Geek Fitness. You get some bonus content, uh, workout, uh, full workout videos uh, uh, follow along with. You don't have to listen to me talk. The audio is killed, so you can listen to whatever music you want to while uh, you follow along with those workouts and going to be adding more all the time. So consider that uh, patreon.com slash Theology Geek Fitness. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. We'll see you in the next one. God bless.